January 6, 2021 was the greatest day of my life. Why? I felt like a patriot that was standing beside our founding fathers, speaking up against King George. I felt like Braveheart. We first met Keith Scott at a small rally on the anniversary of January 6. He told us he'd spent months after the 2020 election living in his car and going to every Stop the Steal rally. Now he's carrying a huge flag calling the movement a cult. But leaving a cult, whether real or metaphorical, is messy. If something was posted saying that there was a rally, like, I was not in control. I was going no matter what. How did I get caught up in this? I'd never been to a Trump rally. You know, I wasn't one of those people. The whole crew for this interview was also at Jan 6. So we had the same question. How did so many people get to a place where they were willing to commit crimes to stop a democratic election, all while calling themselves patriots? They maced me. They pushed me out and they maced me. So we spent four hours listening to every detail of Keith's political journey. At the time I lived in Georgia, I get there on election day and there were only a couple of cars in the parking lot. The record turnout that they say that there was in Fulton County, Georgia, which is the county that I voted in, it didn't happen. Wasn't there a significant amount of early voting though? In that demographic, it's a poor area. It's a predominantly um, black area. And you'll never be able to convince me that they were sitting around watching CNN and Fox News and all these things. And that's what they were most concerned about was the election and getting a ballot and mailing it in. If you were to ask people, is Joe Biden gonna get more of the black vote than Barack Obama? People would say no. And Biden supposedly did. It doesn't make any sense. Right, but the, the bigger picture here is actually one I'm, I'm really interested in because it is a recurring theme, which is that you have skepticism about the black vote in this election. Part of it, it seems to me, you know, you said you lived and voted in a black area, and how could those people have the time to pay attention to the election? And why do you think you would be able to pay attention to that and black people wouldn't? I don't think that everyone is interested in politics like I am. It's not necessarily about racial lines. Trump himself has repeated this same trope. It's a quip, not a fact. In 2008, an estimated 95% of black voters voted for Obama. In 2020, 92% voted for Biden. But lies like this one were repeated until they seemed like cold hard truth, as Keith drove from protest to protest and stopped the steel brew. I, I'm not like trying to say like you're a bad person or like you would use a racial slur. What I'm just trying to get at is that you might not be sensitive to the big picture about what it looks like disputing votes only in places where most of the voters are people of color and that people of color might take some offense to that. That's not what Stop This Deal was about. And Stop This Deal is about those votes don't count. Somebody's votes don't count, not your vote, but someone else's. I'm not gonna be painted into the, this narrative that you're trying to, trying to go down this rabbit hole. I'm kind of done with the racial uh, part of this. This is the party of Trump! I got introduced to all these other people that I had never heard of that week in Georgia. We the people! I remember Nick Fuentes being there, Alex Jones being there, Ali Alexander, the founder of Stop the Steal. I actually met the leader of the Proud Boys, Enrique Torrio. He was just really nice. He's not a really big guy. He's a little bigger than me. Well, the reason it's interesting is that like, these small groups who've always been on the fringe cease a mass movement and they... Yes, 100%. And the crowd is going wild. The movement was growing. There's mountains of evidence. This election was a fraud on America. Sidney Powell is going to come up. Everybody felt like she is the one that is going to unveil all the evidence of election fraud. But the people that were giving evidence of election frauds, it was the same message that we had heard a day before or weeks before, but it was like, it's coming. It's going to be revealed. Like just keeping us, keeping us holding on for the next breath. All that energy was released on Jan 6. Keith saw what we saw, but he didn't take the same lesson. I felt like a proud patriot on that day. And I know that's not popular to say, but that's what I felt like. 
then just some crazy fight scenes started happening. Did you think, are we the bad guys? I thought this doesn't end well. What made you realize this was a cult? So this is like deeply immoral behavior. So it's not patriotic either. So after January the 6th, I came here and I kept mumbling, I feel like I just got out of a cult. What makes Keith a frustrating interview is that though he calls it a cult, he still believes much of the cult's propaganda and he still excuses its actions. Because our crew is in the middle of the violence, it's hard not to want Keith to say it was wrong and he's sorry, which isn't really fair because no one with any power has said they're sorry. It was a lot of self-analysis to get over the trauma of January 6th itself and the things that I saw on both sides. Yeah, I don't understand the, how you can not pick sides after what happened. Like, this seems like a really clear side. The things that I saw were bad, regardless of which side you're on is what I'm saying. There's nothing illegal about watching a fight that's happening. That's not, that's not illegal. Well, when you're part of a mob that's storming the Capitol. I was, I was and, saying- and Setting aside illegal, what about moral? Uh, but I wasn't doing anything wrong. Like, you were I, part of the crowd. Your very presence was giving them support. You were part of the crowd as well. I was a journalist. They were screaming in my face. I'm, I'm just a citizen just standing there yelling. But like, I feel like we're getting sidetracked. I mean, I, I, I think actually this is really at the heart of the question is this is the problem of a mob. It absolves people of their moral culpability. You're like, I was just one person. Oh, well, I want to be clear. The people that actually, uh, you know, had physical confrontations with police officers, they should be held accountable for that. Do you there think was, the leaders who made these promises that they couldn't keep, that there would be evidence that would change the results of the election, do you think they bear responsibility for the mob that stormed the Capitol? And no, I don't. They created a grassroots movement that was Stop the Steal. I realized that I had been addicted to politics. I had created this reverence for the leaders of Stop the Steal. I felt like I was, which is, more than ironic, looking back, helping prevent a second civil war. And um, this is just- He's writing a book like that he says will help people who got addicted to Trump the way he did. So we followed him around a Trump rally to see if he could get through. How you doing, Patriot? Good, I, I know you don't remember me. I saw you several times last year. Right now, it's like a drug because I'm going to get one of these patriotic t-shirts. Keith was nervous that he'd get yelled at and rejected by the people who were once his allies. And that is what happened. I was at the Capitol on January the 6th, and my book is about all the stuff that I saw at all the Stop to Steal rallies, and then how- contact how, the FBI? Not yet. Um, He's a fed. It's, I, I get that a lot. Because yeah, it's true. CNN? Yeah, yeah. No, I have nothing. I mean, that is the definition of fake news. I don't care about your book, and I prefer you just go, like... How'd that go? Wow. Are they in the cult? So, first of all, just their demeanor. Yes. And the way that by my flag and by CNN, how they were uh, just completely triggered. I guess I feel like I'm going to take incoming fire from both sides as the marketing continues. Have you just switched from the cult to being a grifter? I'm losing money by doing this, honestly. I can have a great business career doing something else. I don't have this big political message that I'm trying to promote. I'm not out here trying to make a bunch of money. I mean, if I make money, that's, you know, that's cool. I've taken a year of my life writing but this If book. you're not here to make a political point, what's, your, what's the point at all? Uh, my point is I'm doing this to look out for people. I met people on my Stop Distill journey that lost their job because they, they, they were gonna go to the rally no matter what. People um, that were estranged from their family, whether it's politics or something else, don't get so caught up that you're not making your own decisions anymore.